So what it's going to do is it's going to send in this new salary. It's going to prorate it based on the start date. It's also going to look at the type of position I'm starting and calculate some of the things associated with it, right? So based on this level, they might get different allowances because of this is a, a vice president of sales. They also might have calculations based on health care and as well as all of the things related to payroll taxes and fringe benefits and everything related to that. I set up in my first step was information related to what are the drivers or what are the rates that we use. What this calculation now is going to do is it's going to do the calculation and it's going to um, at, calculate against all those rates. So when I go back to my business process flow now, what I can actually see is a change now in the information I just saw. So I changed it for Italy, and yes, if I go back to that information, I will see that template. I'll see the updates I just made. But say I was making my, my planning information updates, and the manager uh, for Europe, the controller, wanted to see how I was doing. They can now, as soon as I've sent that data in, go run a report and see that change. So for example, I can go run this personnel expense report here. And what it's going to do is allow me to um, be able to see the information associated with the changes I just made. So for example, here I have my new hire, my VP of sales came in here. We have their salary. For the annual year, it's only 70000 because they're starting in June. And then they go through and then they calculate out. You can see all the different rates associated that got calculated based on the information I put in. So uh, you, the user can only you know, potentially enter a handful of information, but the rest of the financial information can be derived from that using some global rates. So no more do you have to question how they came up with the number they used for um, medical benefits or wonder if they calculated the payroll taxes correctly. That can be all controlled centrally where the system is administered and then the users out in the field can just feel that they're taken care of because they need to put in the pertinent information they're aware of and everything else can be taken care of. So if we return back here, we can also see that we're seeing some changes into our numbers. So we're seeing that our budget version 1 and version 2 are varying now as we move through um, and changes in our salary and wages and we're moving through our fringe benefits have modified. Some of the other things that we can also modify in here is, for example, our expenses. So all the companies have to deal with is their overhead expenses. Everything is, is something that needs to be modified in, in this day and age. You need to keep a, a quick eye on this information. The way that this template has been set up, um, which is you know, just an option for setting up an expense template, it actually gives us our forecast, right? so our best guess for the end of this year um, so that we can see how best to deal with next year. And we have some assumptions that kind of made. It said that you know, based on this in our first version, we said that these were all going to increase by you know, these set percentages. But I know actually that my rent expense is actually going to be 3%. So I can change that there, and it will modify it across. I can also actually say that instead of um, the different growth methods, it can actually change it. So in say my supplies aren't going to be using the fast growth, I can actually use one of many different methodologies that I actually have built into this template for the users to determine. So say my supplies is going to be modified by work days. So it can go and use the work days per month and determine how to spread that supply across. Um, if I have a set amount, I can also put that set amount in here and it will take and spread that out uh, across the year using whatever methodology I use there as well. Um, also an example that many uh, companies have to deal with is the fact that they need some more detail behind these expenses. These can be large chunks of money for their organization and they're going to need to know why and how information is, is being budgeted for so that come back next year when they're trying to do comparative analysis and wonder why there's such great variances, they want to see some detail. They'll have the actuals, but they're going to need to know why and what was budgeted for. So I have this concept of line item detail, which is available to me to you. Uh, what this is going to do is it's building a template now to allow me to actually put in line by line information. So say I'm going to go to a sales conference here. I can actually put that information in. Um, we talked about having the alphanumeric information in here. We can input the alphanumeric again here. So it's going to actually save this context here as well as the amount. So say this, we're going to put this in as $10,000 in June. So what I can do is once again submit this data through and it's going to be taking this information and taking the comments as well as the da data, adding it back to my system, and then storing that for later use for your uh, variance reporting down the line next year, for example. Right? So that data has gone through. We have our other expenses here. We can send this data in through the, the information. Um, so we have the updates to this. So it, 
you know, all in all, we're making these changes through the system, and it's actually updating across the board. Once again, doing the currency, it's once again rolling it up within the organization. So one of that, the, the terms within the consolidation of the budget. So Italy is now part of Europe, part of Europe, part of management. It's going to be updated across the board real time. No longer do we have to send a template from Italy to the U.S. headquarters. They have to link that into the global model. Uh, hope all the links work. Hope nobody changed anything in the template. Um, it's kind of a, a real-time update. So you can have people all over the world accessing the system, updating it during the plan cycle, and you're seeing the real-time consolidation. So you, know, you can give management an estimate on what the bottom line is going to look like in the middle of the plan. No more waiting to the end when everybody's finished and then spending the time to roll it up, look at the data, and see if it's going to make sense within your organization. And so we see we have various types of um, inputs. I have one here for uh, balance sheet drivers. So for example, if you need to do some planning on your balance sheet and wanting to go through that information and putting drivers through capital expenditures, you can have information based on um, the type of capital expenditures. You can have um, when they're supposed to depreciate. You can also set up when you're going to purchase something, but it doesn't go into service. So you can have some variance there on when the depreciation calcs uh, go into effect. As well as information related to we hired some new employees, and whenever we hire a new uh, VP of sales, we know we have to buy a laptop, we know we have to make sure we have a desk and um, the furniture and that kind of information associated with it. So you can link all this information together to be one central place one has their information. So the other thing is now that, say for the sake of time, that we finish up all of our entries here for Italy, I can actually go in here now and say I've completed this step and click it through and that will now let me say, okay, I've finished my inputs, I need to go in now and do some reporting and see how it looks and make sure I'm happy with the whole thing. And basically when I'm finished with this last step, I can kind of go in and say I'm done and I can set the status of the I Italy budget to submit it so that people understand, uh, my managers get notification via email that the Italy is done and it can go be reviewed and no more modifications are going to be made to it. So it's kind of finalized. So another thing here is you can look at, at analysis packages here and this is just a setup of a, a basic package, for lack of a better term, of different information, right? So I have an overview, I have got income statement, a balance sheet, a basic cash flow of the changes I've made. You can see these percents. Uh, this change information here is based on the information I just put the change in between version 1 and version 2. Um, some of the other things that I have related to this is I can actually go and publish this information off to the web. I have the ability to publish this out and so say Italy's finished, we're complete, we're going to send it off um, to the European controller. I can publish this out to the web and from there my, my users can actually go in and view the data in a published uh, view here off onto the web. So you actually have lots of different options as far as how one can enter data, how one can report on data, um, the information related to how one can consolidate data and then a global view on how to maintain the system. Yes, this is still Excel, so your users, uh, your department managers, your uh, people all over the world that are participating in the planning process can follow a step-by-step -step process. They're using Excel. If you're using Excel today, we can take the current Excel workbooks you have and just take and connect them in with BPC. So they would feel like they're doing the same process they've always done. It's no different to them but now you're using a central database to consolidate the information, do the overall calculations, and keep everything streamlined as far as who has access to what. So it takes away that reliance on shared folders, it takes away that reliance on emailing templates, it takes away that reliance on linking everything together. So I know we're a little bit pressed for time, so I want to try and, and finish up here, but I hope you have kind of had a taste of what you can do within the BPC product for planning. Um, I'd be happy to, to spend more time with you uh, at a future date to go through a more extensive planning overview and really show you some of the, the key pieces of BPC. It is an excellent tool for the planning process 